a lot of stuff to do today, but before I get started, can we see the hours? I'm at 55.1, 55.1 hours. So it's time to talk about this Ventrac as a 50 hour impression update, review update, whatever you want to call it. I waited till 55 because, like I said, I had some initial issues that I'm not counting the first five hours as my time on the machine. So I'm going to do a 55 hour update, but we're going to call it 50. So what do I think about the Ventrac 4520Z? And I'm going to limit this to just the machine, not the attachments. What do I think about this machine after 50 hours of my use? We did have a very rough start. You know, I didn't like the issues I had right out of the gate. So thus far, the hydraulic issue was fixed, loose fitting. The seat had the safety connector that just needed clipped on a little tighter than what it came. Um, and then my slope indicator that magically fixed itself and hasn't come back. It's been 45 hours since I've had an issue with the slope indicator. So, don't know. It acted a little weird yesterday, but I was right at dusk and it was very dusty. So maybe, maybe the slope indicator had an issue with uh, those three sensors being covered enough that it thought about... I was trying to get into the settings mode. Don't know, it was weird. I was just mowing and I looked down and it said uh, it was in the setup mode. Some of the things I mentioned on the first impression video were that uh, a real novice approach, right? I had never operated a Ventrac, had never touched one beyond the demo on site. So I didn't like how the seat belt attached, how it's on, on the machine, not on the seat. That's minor, you get used to it. Um, canopy, I still don't, still don't like plastic. It's got its problems. I've had a continual issue on belts. That's probably my only remaining complaint and that's maybe me, don't know. I got another video I'm gonna have to edit. I'm actually working on it this morning. It'll probably be up before this one, but I had to replace my second tough cut belt I don't know what I'm doing on these belts. I make sure every time I go do a heavy mow, I make sure the tension is good. Don't know. Um, I've gone through two of the attachment belts on the power rake. And then that main PTO belt, that, or I don't know what you call it, the one that's on the front of the vent rack that goes down from the engine itself down to the pulley assembly that you tension when you push the bar in. That belt, I need a new one of those as well. So this vent rack is really hard on belts. I will tell you, I use this machine. Uh, just, just this morning or last night, I watched a video from Blue Cord talking about the, oh, what was it he talked about? The uh, stump grinder and how he tests them and uses them. And I have no doubt that other people use these machines way more than I do. I just know from my point of view, I got a mess. I don't have a business. I'm not driving from job to job. I'm not making money off this machine. I'm just trying to get my place under control and I use the snot out of this thing um, we are early no mid-June I've had this for two little over two months two and a half months and I'm already over 50 hours that should show you how much I use this for someone that has a day job and doesn't uh, take this out and mow yards or grade uh, driveways that type of stuff and I've just scratched the surface of what I need to get done. Um, I'm impressed. Overall, I'm impressed and I would buy it again. If I knew what I knew now, I would buy it again. Uh, I would probably not buy the canopy. Um, I would probably go with a different non-Ventrac branded canopy because this one's just not up, up the snuff. One of my, my video on this canopy where I first broke it, uh, someone else in there I think it was Insight Lawn Care made a comment about a brand canopy he went with, and I looked at that one, and I wish I would have got that canopy instead of the Ventrac canopy. Uh, this one's just too weak. And it's even even when I fix it, and I'm going to, it's going to break again. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to break again. 
So, where are we at with 50 hours on this machine? Fifty of my hours. Let me move the air compressor a little further away. Maybe that'll help a little. So 50 of my hours versus anything else. I still like the machine. Very impressed with what it can do. This Ventrac is essentially a billy goat. I mean, it goes all over my hillside. I still say it can do more than I am comfortable doing. Um, which is fine because if it can do more than I'm comfortable doing, that means I remain safe. The tough cut, now I, I don't want to talk about accessories much today, but the tough cut, it eats up all kinds of stuff you put in front of it. You know, I got the largest horsepower torque model they had because of my hillside and historically I underbuy everything. So I wanted the biggest one that they had. I was worried about getting gas over diesel. Diesel obviously always has more torque, but that's what was available in the largest horsepower was gas. Yes, it is. is what we got. Um, so even at 32 horse, 32.5, uh, I question, could I have gotten bigger? Because, yes, I pushed the machine. I used the machine. I didn't buy it so it could be yard art sitting out in the front yard all the people driving up and down the road all of like five an hour could sit there and go ooh ah look what he has no i got it so i could use it my goal was to get a piece of machinery that was functional for me if this thing had 34 horse 36 horse 38 horse it would do better no question i mean bigger is always better when it comes to engines at least for what i'm doing out here now it does go through gas. I've used more gas on this than anything else I have. Because you have to run it full bore, 3500 RPM, and you engage the whatever the PTO of the day is, or the implement of the day is. So I go through a lot of fuel, but I couldn't have gone with one of the smaller ones. I mean, even this 32 horse, it gets bogged down. You get the tall fescue, you get on these hillsides. Um, no, I couldn't have gone smaller. I could have gone bigger if they had an option, but I couldn't have gone smaller. I will say that Ventrac, as a company, I'm still impressed with with them as a company for standing behind stuff. I've talked to them once or twice more uh, since my initial issue. Um, but I will say the testing they do is the testing that they're able to do. They have that nice, pretty, manicured, perfectly smooth, like a piece of plywood, 30 degree slope out in their backyard. That's fine and dandy. That's not real world. At least not real world anything I've seen. Um, you go from 22 degrees to 28 degrees in a matter of three feet because you started dropping into a stump hole or 
you go from 18 to 24 degrees in a matter of six inches because you crawled up a rock that you couldn't see under the grass and then that rock spins out from under your tire and then you plop back down that's real world if Ventrac wants real world testing they need to talk to some of us that are out here in the real world and I know they do but I have yet to come across videos along the line of what I'm doing a lot of people with Ventrax are running businesses they're um, mowing yards they're you know grading hillsides maybe they're doing some you know rogue this looks bad let me go mow it and I applaud them for that you know I wouldn't mind going out and mowing some yards that look bad but I can't get off my place here because I got too much to do here and you get out to some of that situation yes you'll find a stump you'll find a t-post um, I found a t-post yesterday I wasn't recording at the time but thankfully it was still standing up and it was just buried in a little small batch of trees that I was mowing the trees down and uh, found a post I find lots of rocks that one small section of this hillside over here the beeping hill I pulled uh, I walked back and forth down that hillside just rolling the bigger rocks right rocks I could pick up in a second that were larger than the baseball I filled up three buckets on my front end loader just on a one section of this hillside and that's just rocks resting on top not buried in the dirt that's what Ventrac needs to my opinion because that's where I'm coming from that's where Ventrac needs to focus some of their demos is slippery terrain not grass that's been rained on you know four hours ago and now we're gonna mow across some grass no let's talk about grass that's on a hillside that's rough that was mowed on four hours ago now you got the cuttings that are slippery and you got the rocks that are kicking out or you got the stump holes that are there that's where this machine shines and I wish they talked about that more because those are all things as I researched this Ventrac for years never came across so I'm impressed that it can do it nice if the tough cut was maybe two inches wider three inches wider don't know such that it was the same width as the duels why is that a big deal well as you're out there mowing the tough cut is narrower than the duels and you end up running over things and knocking them down with the tires well, that's no fun because uh, now when you come back for the pass on the return, you got an inch or two of grass or trees or shrubs or whatever is knocked down as opposed to still standing up. Yes, you can take the duels off, but I can't take the duels off because if I took the duels off with my hillsides around here, I'd be taking the duels on and off multiple times a day. Right, I mean, I'd spend more time putting duels on and off than I did mowing, because I'll hit this hillside, then I'll go mow the top pasture. Okay, well, now I have the, the same problem on the hillside with the duels being wider than the tough cut. Then I do, you know, or I have the same problem on this hillside, because I need the duels, and the tough cut's narrower than the duels. I can go up the top pasture, take the duels off, and mow up there. Yeah, fine. But then when I get to the very northwest corner of the pasture, over there I'm hitting 18 degrees so I gotta come back down here put the duels on and then go back up there and finish that it's just not practical to put these things on and off all the time so the duels are one of those uh, double-edged swords that uh, I love them just got to learn that they're a little wider than the machine itself. It's probably
probably not a way around this, but snapping this air filter cap back on, the bottom latch, it's never much fun to get to. There we go. Why in the world Ventrac doesn't make one of these suicide knobs just default? I have no idea, but you look. Go look at the videos. The people that are truly using these things efficiently, everyone I've seen, they got a suicide knob on here because it makes all the difference in the world. I will agree with Blue Cord whenever I saw his video reminding me about these from my childhood. Um, it is probably my favorite attachment so far. Cheesy little $12, $13 accessory off your favorite online big box store is awesome. Now, something that I'm going to talk about in a, another video I got to edit. I got way too many videos. It's easier to push record than it is to actually edit. Mowing the top hill. I don't know if Ventrac has a way to deal with tall grass. Right? I mean, this is not a rotary cutter. This is a tough cut. I don't know if it's intended more for brush than pasture, but I'm using it for both. Why? Well, because I'm up on the pasture trying to get stuff done, and I'm in both, you know, hillsides, slopes, trying to get under fence lines and bushes, and this tough cut's easier to get in there, but focusing on the vent track itself, when you're cutting fescue that's as tall as the hood, or grass, as tall as the hood, this machine does fine. I don't do a full pass. I usually put one of the wheels right on the cut line, you know, so it's cut, not cut, and just leave a little buffer on the side because stuff gets, as it gets pushed over, it gets pushed sideways, you know, forward, left, right, etc. So I leave a buffer over there. And on the flats, I can run about three miles an hour in low gear and without bogging the engine down too much. Um, but the part of the this is where that's where more horsepower come in handy. The part that I don't like is I end up with giant clumps of grass under the vent track itself because the tough cut's knocking them down. But it's so much grass that I almost want to put a skid plate under this thing just to let the grass slide out underneath. And I'll get big clumps right at the behind the fenders. You'll see the grass clumped out. But really on the back, where the hitch is, you'll see big, I mean, we're talking big trailing. It almost looks like I'm running a rake back there. And the only way to get that back out is to either A, get off the machine, pull it all out, get back on the machine and keep going. Totally impractical because it happens all the time. You'll go another 30 feet and you got another big ball back there, so that's not usable. Just keep going and then, you know, Drag and drag and drag and drag until you get all the way down to the far end of your cut, which may be, you know, 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, who knows? Depends on how big of a circle that I'm working on. When I get all the way down to the end, I'll go out where I've already mowed, back up a little bit, just enough that the back tire goes over the clump, you know, because you turn and back up, go over the clump, until the front tire hits the clump. And you go a little bit further and let the front tire get up on top of it because that seems to whatever it's lassoed to on the bottom that seems to un unhook it then you can start going forward again and just leave that big clump behind so i don't know if there's a way to fix that but i believe all that grass and how tall and long it is is just getting wrapped around the axles is what i think is happening I'm not sure I'll figure that one out eventually, but it'd be nice if there was something to keep the really tall grass out from just being towed underneath you. The other one is the duals. They pick up a lot of stuff in between the tires. So far I've been able to get everything out that they pick up, but if you look at this one, I was working when it was a little wet out, and you see that? That's mud and rock clumped down in there. All that mud and rock just gets kind of collected, and uh, 
So all of that mud and rock just gets collected down in the duels. And uh, you have to sit there and try and get it out. I mean, I think that's just nature of the beast. You got the duels for a reason. And then, uh, I mean, they can't just have one super wide giant tire. I mean, I guess they could, but that would be kind of odd. It'd make a balloon more than a flat surface. But, so that's a, just nature of the beast, I believe. Like I said, most of the stuff I can able to get out, been able to get out, but this one, not so much. So all in all, let's see. Hydraulic issue, disappointing, minor, fixed. Seat, disappointing, super minor, fixed. Uh, canopies, you know, is what it is. We'll find a way around that. But it's been a good machine. It's not perfect. I have gotten it up on six wheels. Just because of the where I was, I had to do that. And it needs a bath. But uh, so far, this has been a good machine. And let's look at what I was talking about for the grass back here. So if we look at what I was talking about, this stuff here, you just get a big, I mean, it just gets stuck in there when you're mowing. It's wedged in everywhere. A stick down in there. I can't see where it goes. Hmm. But I think that's what's happening is I think those big clumps of grass are just getting wrapped around the axle here. I need to maybe branch see this side not so bad right I mean not so much on the driver side still some stuff in there on the passenger side I don't know if that's because of oh that's why. <laughs> My idea of skid plates is not out in left field. There's a box around the battery here, which gives a totally smooth surface, nothing to adhere to. I mean, here, let me rotate the camera. Look at that. Nice, smooth surface. I had two branches, right? I had this and this were on the driver's side, beside the battery box. This is some of what I dug out, and there's more down there. But look, this is wide open. We got hoses, we got filter, we got all kinds of stuff. Maybe feedback for Ventrac here. Maybe they should put a little plate on this side like they did on the battery box side to help keep stuff from getting up in there. That would be kind of convenient and nice. Another thing I thought of is the operator comfort area. One thing I've noticed, I'm vertically challenged. But this operator area for your legs is a little bit hard. You got to be careful. The seat for me, I need to pull it pretty far forward to reach these pegs. Did I mention vertically challenged?
more careful with this. saw how that went. The power rake is much easier than the tough cut, but the tough cut I'm figuring out. I have always, I have been learning not to park your implements in the sun. And I say that as this is parked in the sun. We're going to have a problem with the hydraulics. The hydraulics are going to heat up and that's going to be a closed system. So it's going to be hot and I'm going to have to get a little piece of wood and a ball peen hammer and knock the front and let it spray everywhere. So in conclusion, I'll just end this with, I have had no issues with the company. You know, the company has been good so far. I say that with no freebies, no, you know, oh, you broke a belt, you broke a canopy, here's a free one. No, I say that with 100% expenditure out of my pocket, well, our pocket, the wife as well. And uh, so the company has been good to us. Um, I wish I wouldn't have had the hydraulic issue, right? I mean, that put me down, that gave me a bad taste in my mouth right out of the gate. That's, to my opinion, a factory a quality control issue that could have been dealt with before I ever even saw the machine. That is a slam on Ventrac right there, but you know, they stood behind it, they got it fixed. Just gave me a bad taste right out of the gate. Um, slope indicator going wonkers. Okay, that's nothing major. Yes, the slope indicator is something that I paid for, so it shouldn't have gone wonkers. But, uh, you know, hey, things break, but I don't like them broken as soon as I get them. You know, the canopy being plastic, I knew that was going to be an issue as soon as I saw it. I should have asked. Am I getting a plastic or a metal canopy? I didn't even think about it because I was so excited about the machine itself. Come on, what the heck? There we go. <clears throat> the seat issue <laughs> where the machine wouldn't stay running. Okay, fine. I could live with a clip that comes unclipped, but what about someone that doesn't know to look for that? I only knew to look because I had had similar problems on the old Cub Cadet. But the machine itself is good. I like the lights, which are silly because you can always add aftermarket lights. But the fact that I didn't have to mess with it was really nice. Time saver. My opinion, worth it. Um, I love the versatility of being able to... Versatility, probably a bad word. Operational ability? Can I make that a word? Make up a word? Operational ability. There you go. New word of the day. Doesn't exist. Don't look it up. Um, tough cut in the front. Power rake in the front. Whatever in the front. Those are the only two I have. Uh, being able to get into things, creep over a hill to push dirt forward, creep over a hill to mow over the edge, go under a cedar tree or under an oak tree so that you can then get in to limit up to get further. Yes, I keep my loppers right there. Used to be a bungee, came off in a tree somewhere. So somewhere out there is probably a well-shredded uh, bungee cord. So I need to find a better way 
someone early on gave me a link to a tool rack for the ROPS that was more than I want to pay today. I'll figure something out. I thought about a 2x4 with some something on it, but whatever. We'll just leave them hanging. But the operability of being able to turn so quickly to the, your hands on the SDLA, you know, just forward, backward, forward, backward. Yes, the Mahindra has got a forward and backward pedal. You don't have to change gears. You just rank, 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 rank. But I find the handle, once you get used to it, much more usable, more intuitive, uh, quicker. Um, this can turn tighter than the Mahindra. This can, it's just so much easier to navigate and get things going than my Mahindra is. Not slamming Mahindra either. That machine has its uses and it did quite well yesterday working on the driveway. Got to take the power rig down there and touch up what we did with the Mahindra to uh, try and work on the driveway some more. See if we can get that done today. Um, but this guy just is easier to navigate, easier to operate. You gotta get used to it. The suspension seat's kind of nice. <clears throat> um, the armrest was a complaint that I had. Uh, but you know what? I just raised the right armrest up where the handles don't hit it. And in, in the end, my arm actually rests right on the outside of the handle. And it gives a rest support while operating. <laughs> when I bought this, and again, I'm not going to mention who I bought from, <clears throat> I was told that the armrests were good for keeping you in the saddle so you didn't slide out the sides. Yeah, maybe if... I'm not a small guy. Maybe if you were 100 pounds bigger than me. So there's plenty of room for big boys to sit in this thing. But I'm on a slope going sideways. I slide down, and then there's a nice gap over here on the other side. They don't keep you secure from sliding. No. They may keep you from sliding out, but they don't keep you secure from sliding the way I understood. Maybe I misunderstood, but they don't keep you secure the way I had interpreted what the salesman told me. But that's not a knock on the armrest. <clears throat> I use this one quite a lot. I'll rest my back elbow on here while I'm steering, especially on the straights. Um, you know, I just have my arm kind of resting with the elbow up there. This one, <clears throat> I just rest my arm on the outside. That would be the one thing I question if I buy it again. You know, if I had to start over, know what I know, would I get these armrests a second time? They're nice, but if you're pinching pennies and on the edge, maybe skip them. Maybe skip the canopy and look for something aftermarket. I don't know. The way this has a canopy on here, the way it mounts, you might need to get their canopy and then replace it if you break it. I've not seen a Ventrac without a uh, canopy. Can you buy just this bracket? See this bracket that they have mounted on here? You got your ROPS, and a lot of the canopy ROPS that I've seen, we can go look at the Mahindra if we wanted to, but they just have a U-bolt like this that brackets onto some contraption for the canopy itself. This one has this bracket that then you can change the angle of the canopy and then raises the canopy up higher, right? I mean, that's that's a good amount of distance that this bracket puts up there. So, I don't know. Maybe you have to get their canopy initially and then fix it. Like I said, I have an idea for what I'm gonna do. Put a piece of steel that goes across and then bends down just as a protective front cover if my welding kit ever gets here. It's a little tight to be inside of there. I've not done a maintenance on it yet myself. Um, 50 hours, I'm gonna have to look at what does the manual say. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a 50 hour oil change or something like that. My Mahindra had a 100 hour oil change for its first one. So, but I did a one year oil change on it before I did the 100 hour. That's where we're at. And this, is what I used 
Ventrac 4520Z looks like. And this shows that I'm using my Ventrac. Again, it's not yard art. I use it. I try not to abuse it. I try to take care of it. But it's meant to work. It's meant to run. It's meant to get jobs done. It's not meant to sit and look pretty. It's not just yard art. So that's where I'm at at 50 hours. Everything's checked out. Everything's ready to roll. Fluids are good. Um, I should probably check the fluid on the power rake since I just hooked it up. Let's go work on the projects of the day.